Hey there, it's Marcus, and this video is going to be about features and the feature browser that you can find here on the main palette. In GeoLayers, a feature is a geospatial geometry. It can be one of a point, line, or a polygon. To explain you how features work in GeoLayers, I got this little setup here. This is actually just a tiny little zoom. And we begin on uh, Vancouver right here. So let's jump into this. In this field, you can browse your features. You have certain opportunities to add features to the browser, and I'm gonna talk through them. So there's this set of buttons right here, and the first one that you can see there is the file icon. So you can import geospatial files. I have some stuff in here. I have a root, I have a so-called feature mesh. I have Whistler, and I have Vancouver here. When you select one of those features, this set of buttons appear below them. So those are actually actions that you can do with the features. Now let me begin with this one, because this one will add Vancouver to my favorites. And I don't want to have this file, so I can remove this from the browser. I also don't need the countries yet, so I remove them. But what else can we do with those features? Of course, we can draw this. So we can select the style here, I'll click the draw button. That looks nice, but I want to have it masked to the land, actually. GeoLayers has a pretty cool feature, therefore. So let me quickly show you how to handle this. So you can right or long click this plus, and you can say create land mask map comp. It creates a Luma land mask map comp and links it to our map comp. I'm going to select my map comp again, and I'm going to now use this as a track mat. Now I might want to have like the border, the original border in a different style. So if you want to draw a feature in a certain style, you can also long click this one and click the style to draw it. And to know which city this is, of course, we can add a label to Vancouver. I have this marker composition here. So you could also add this to your comp when this is selected you could click the snap selected layer to feature and this will then become a marker layer. But the label is enough, so I'm gonna remove this one. Now let's add some more features to our browser. The second button up here will add a like a bounding box for our current view. So when you click this button, the map is going to be centered at the selected features. So I can always come back to this view. With the next button, you can download all features for the current view. So this is pretty cool. By long or right clicking, this popover appears. And you can now select, okay, I want boundaries, buildings. In my case, I just want places. Like there's land use, the earth, water, everything you need. Then you have like a detail slider and the download button. So let's click download. Cool, now the features are downloaded. And let's see if we can find Whistler. So by typing anything here, it will filter our list of features down here. You can also say, okay, I don't want to have points. So you see that Whistler disappears, or I don't want to have lines. I don't want to have like polygons. And the last button is pretty cool because this will only show you features that are inside your current view of the selected map comp. Cool. I'm going to add Whistler to my favorites, reset the filter here, and add a label on the comp. Now, what do we have else? This little button can calculate routes for you. So, if you have two features selected, you can click this button and the routes dialog pops up. Here you can say, all right, my coasting model is a car, a bike, pedestrian, or go by plane. But we're good with the car now. You could also type in anything like here, uh, Vancouver, and click the search result. This button is there to like swap origin and destination. And if you're good with this, you can add the route to the browser and GLIS will add it on the bottom of the list. A route contains the lag, which is actually the line feature and maneuvers, which is point features. I don't need them, so I'm going to remove them. 
and I actually add the like to my favorites and I'm gonna remove this. Now let's add this route to our map. So I'm gonna draw it with like a white and I wanna have that fancy stripes. Cool, looks a bit like candy. Now we could add a label to this road. I'm gonna select a different color here and add a label. Well, pretty nice, but come on, it is a root. And what you can do is right click this button and this option appears. You can animate the label along a feature. This works for a line feature or a polygon. So when you select this, you see those little speed lines appear in the icon. I wanna have my locator to be animated along this feature. I don't need this label anymore. You can do actually the same with uh, the marker function. But there's actually a few buttons down here that we didn't talk about yet. So for example, you can select the feature and click the feature properties button. And this will open the feature properties. And you can rename the feature or give it a custom style. So I could say, all right, Whistler is a point, so I want to give it a point style. And you see all the properties that's, that the feature has. When you have a custom style selected here, you can use GLA's auto apply style function. And if you click this, these style thumbnails appear. And you can click them, select the style, or say, all right, I want to remove the custom style. Oops. The style thumbnail is still there. Now let me quickly explain you why. By long or right clicking, the style selector, you open the feature styles editor. Here you can add, clone, remove and manage your styles. There's going to be a in-depth tutorial about how you set up styles. And there's another tab here, which is rules. I'm not going to dive in this into deep. This is also part of the styles and rules tutorial, but let me quickly explain you this. A rule is actually a set of conditions that a feature can fulfill. And if it does so, GLAs can automatically apply a certain style. My rule name is point, the style is also point, and it is applied to all point features, because that's my only condition. And this is why all the point features in our browser have a certain style. And there's another rule in my set, which is polyplace. Polyplace is applied to polygon geometries that have a class that is place. And because Vancouver is a polygon feature and it has a property that says the class is place, this rule matches and applies the style to Vancouver. You can also use rules to filter the features by typing in rule and the name of your rule. I know that this route passes Squamish, so I'm gonna add another feature to my browser. Squamish is also a polygon and Squamish is also of the class place. That's why the style is also applied to it. So let's draw it to our map and add a label. I'm gonna reset my filter here and switch off auto apply style. Another button that we didn't talk is the create feature mesh. I get a lot of places here. You need to select at least two features. I'm gonna select all those places and click the create feature mesh button. And a feature mesh is added to our browser. Inside this mesh, you get all the points and you get lines connecting each point with each other. So for example, I wanna have a lot of lines going from Whistler to all the other places. So I filter the feature mesh by Whistler. I'm gonna select all the lines and I'm gonna draw them. I'm gonna reset the filter here, collapse the lines and take all the points and draw them with the point style. Well, this might be a cool feature, but it actually destroys our sweet map computer. So I'm gonna remove this. Just wanted to show you what you can do with it. And I'm gonna remove it from the browser also. Now the last button I'm gonna talk about is export selected features. 
it is exactly what the description says. You select features, click this button, type in a name, and GLayers will export it as a GeoJSON file, which has been imported afterwards here. That's it, now you learned a lot about features, how to draw them, label them, add them to your browser, calculate routes, add them to your favorites, export GeoJSONs, and a lot more that you can do with features in GeoLayers too. So have a great day, bye!